got my spiritual warfare music playing in the background. Feeling tough. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. The battle is the Lord's, you know, fighting His strength. Some of the best spiritual warfare is to actually, uh, you know, you die in Christ. He raises you up. <laughs> you fight from there. But I do have some stuff here. I got my mom's, uh, well, my ex-mom, I guess. She went into glory already. She flew away and uh, left the old or her suit behind. She's in glory with Jesus right now, so hallelujah. But I, she left me this Bible. Hallelujah. And all those mother's prayers that, you know, that's why I'm still here. <laughs> Yeah, she basically slew a million demons just to, you know, break her son <laughs> free from all the yuck. That's what, uh, she did a lot of spiritual warfare. Mother's prayers are one of the greatest warfare weapons, you know. <laughs> break their children free. Shabbat. Well, let's we'll start off today's video by, uh, allowing the Holy Spirit to just destroy us. Destroy everything that we think is us that isn't us. It's just actually the enemy putting a blockade in our minds, putting a blockade in our heart, putting a blockade. Jesus said uh, the God of this age or, or the enemy, what does he say? <laughs> he, the enemies uh, veiled us, but the veil is taken away in Christ. Something like that, I can't remember the Bible right now. That's why I gotta reread it. I, I, no matter how much I read the Bible, I always have to reread it, re -read it over and over and over again because it just keeps getting unraveled to what God is actually saying. There's so many different, multiple dimensions of, of truth. I mean, God is the truth, but we just come in from glory to glory uh, ever the more He reveals Himself before us. You know, we go from glory to glory, breakthrough to breakthrough, triumph to triumph, you know, victory to victory. But the glory to glory is actually just taking on the image of God by beholding Him in, in the glory. Yeah, so whatever I heard, where did I hear that today? I think I heard that today that, uh, you know, you take on the image of God by remaining in the presence of God. You know, how, it's like Moses. He spent time in the presence of God in the tent and he took on his image and his face started glowing because, you know, God is light. He's the father of light, so hallelujah. Well, let's get into this. Uh, I want to talk some more about some more keys on uh, how the enemy works and how you destroy him in Christ. <laughs> it's fun. And I've I got my finger uh, bookmarked at Goliath, David and Goliath. There's a lot of keys in there. I personally fought Goliath. <laughs> it was in a dream. But, uh, yeah. Anyways, let's get into this, man. Shaka. Holy Spirit, we just welcome you right now to give you all of our body, our soul, and our spirit. Now put to death all the deeds of the flesh, God. It's Romans 8. Put to death the deeds of the flesh by the Spirit of God. Holy Spirit, crucify our flesh. Crucify everything, like our, our soulish fallen nature, the um, fallen emotions, toxic emotions, uh, the mind that is not the mind of Christ. Just put that all to death in Christ and let the Spirit of God arise within us, having the true mind of Christ, the emotions of God, the Spirit of God. When, you're, when you have the joy of the Lord, that's the joy of the Lord. It's His emotions. It's His Spirit. It's pure. It's not like human emotions where you, uh, you know, whatever, hallelujah. <laughs> uh, this, this video is having a little bit of a hard time getting on the traction. We're just kind of peeling out everywhere, so... Holy Spirit, help us. <laughs> help us get on that one track mind, that Jesus, that narrow road, you know, the mind of Christ, Shabba. Fill us up, God. We want to get so plastered in the Holy Ghost. You're our discernment, God. And we thank you. We welcome you uh, just to come and teach us through this little Bible study and through my personal experiences of how we defeat demons and. Uh, yeah, it's all done in your name, God. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we just receive more of the peace of God that passes all understanding. All that theology that's worthless, 
we just receive the peace of God to teach us. We have one teacher, Holy Spirit. If you want to teach us through a man, or you want to teach us through circumstances, or teach us through everything around us, our ears are open, God. Our ears are circumcised to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. God, I thank you for the angels here. I thank you for the angels of the Lord that encamps around about those who fear him. I thank you for your peace, God. I love your peace, Lord. Shut up. Now, this is uh, 1 Samuel uh, 17. Now the Philistines gathered together their armies to battle and were gathered together at Shokoth, which belongs to Judah, and pitched between Shokoth and Azekah in Ephes Damim. <laughs> These names, huh? And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together and pitched by the valley of Elah, and set the battle in array against the Philistines. Shaka. The Philistines stood on a mountain on the one side, and Israel stood on a mountain on the other side, and there was a valley between them. And there went out a champion out of the camp of the Philistines named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span, and he had a helmet of brass upon his head. And he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. I want to stop right there. He had, and he had a helmet of brass upon his head. That was a, that's a cursed heavens. <laughs> I think it was in the, uh, somewhere else in the Bible it says the heavens will be brass. Helmet of brass on his head. It's like the heavens are brass. You can't have, you don't have the mind of Christ. He's fighting in the flesh. And when the flesh empowers demonic spirits. So he has this helmet of brass around his head, or on his head. Like our head is Christ. Our head is the open heavens. Our head is Christ, the manifestation of glory, the mind of Christ, the thoughts of Christ, the victory of Christ. When you step into Christ, you step into his victory also. So your life, you are dead. Your life is hid with Christ in God. So you may as well just take partake in his victory that he already overcame. You know, he's, I'm going to get ahead of myself, but he's the rock that killed Goliath. You know, Jesus Christ is the cornerstone. Upon this rock I will build my church, he said. It was the revelation of him being the Christ. Upon the revelation of Jesus being the Christ, he's building his church. Because that revelation of Christ that you're in, you're actually in that stone that's whizzing and boom. I killed Goliath. I'm ahead of myself, but that's a hope. I couldn't help myself. That's a that's a tasty little nugget right there. And a stone, we all know, is a revelation. You know, we are living stones built up into a spiritual house. Living stones. What are why are they living? Because we're in the image of God, who is the cornerstone. <laughs> he holds all the stones together. Apart from him, we're not even in that spiritual house. But in Christ, we're part of that spiritual house. And was it Nehemiah? He rebuilt the temple, I believe it was Nehemiah, with burnt stones. Burnt stones have been through trials, tribulations. They fought the fight. They're warrior stones. <laughs> They've been burnt. <laughs> They've been, you know, scorched. They've been in a few battles. But, uh... And it was, the latter house is supposed to be greater than the former house, right? So it's okay if you've been through a few battles, lost a few, won a few. That's fine. God's still, he's going to use everyone. The raw, the brand new, the, the old, the vintage, the veterans. We're all in this house together and builtly fit together by Christ himself. He's the one who holds us all together. And a stone is a revelation. <laughs> Because he's upon this rock, I'll build my church. It's the revelation of Christ. And uh, so we're revealing who God is by getting, like you're in the house, you're in the stone, you're in the cornerstone and you're connected to him. And his image just comes through you. It's like a living, it's a living house. We get the nutrients from the cornerstone. We get the image from the cornerstone, you know? And uh, as, he just, as we just receive those nutrients and that spiritual, uh, transformation power we come into his image and we manifest that image so that people can really taste and see that God is good and they realize wow <laughs> God is real <laughs> how do I how do I 
get saved. You know, how do I receive this God? But anyways, I'm jumping way all over the place. That's okay. I'm just going to shatter these nuggets everywhere. Uh, shaka. So he had this helmet of brass. He had a helmet of brass, which is closed heavens, closed thoughts to God, closed everything. He's blocked off from God. And, uh, but Jesus Christ has taken us out of that. He's given us a crown of life, a crown of glory, a cl like the crown of glory, you know, to manifest faith, to destroy all, I mean, how, this is how we overcome even our faith. Hold on a sec. And uh, Saul, uh, Saul, Goliath, he, he didn't have faith. He had a lot of uh, courage or whatever. What might have even been pride. But uh, he had that, I can guarantee that. But anyways, let's, let's keep on reading before I just fly all over the place. And I'm just going to land back in Christ and just kind of uh, rest a little bit, man. Just relax, rest, rest. Uh, hallelujah. And he had a helmet of brass. <laughs> Shut up. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we just take a drink break. I just want to drink in more of your presence and your peace, Lord. Some of the greatest forms of victory in spiritual warfare is rest. Casting off all of the cares of this world. And just like resting and just remaining in that peace of God that passes all the understanding. So that it rules and reigns in your heart. God rules and reigns in your heart. He's ruling your heart and he's reigning through your heart. He's ruling and reigning in your heart. I mean, that's that's where I want my heart to be. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Let God be your treasure. And then he can just rule and reign in your heart. And all those anti-peace things, well, they have to fall off because he's the Prince of Peace. And the Prince of Peace will just, just fill the crevices of your heart everywhere where you've yielded your heart to God he just fills those things with him which is perfect peace he's the principality of peace hallelujah he had a helmet of brass upon his head this is back to Goliath now and he was armed with a coat of mail <laughs> I just had the mailman joke pop in my head I'm not gonna say it the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. This guy's decked out in a closed heaven, you know. He's decked out in brass. You know, he had a coat that was 5,000 shekels of brass. Remember, you know what kind of coat uh, Joseph wore, right? It's like he's wearing this closed heavens. But Joseph, when he uh, got thrown into the pit, you know, the guy in the... Uh, in the Old Testament, Genesis. <laughs> Joseph is symbolic of Jesus. He's like a foreshadow of uh, what Jesus was. <sighs> and uh, he had the coat of many colors. He wore, it's like he wore the covenant promises that were from, you know, Noah's Ark. I'll never uh, flood the earth again. And he gave the rainbow. And he had this, well, Joseph had this coat of many colors. He was walking clothed in the covenant of God symbolically that's what we are to wear it's like we wear the seven spirits of God who just teach us disciple us and and the, like the wisdom is coming through you're wearing wisdom like a garment but it's in your heart coming through you he or she I don't know <laughs> understanding spiritual understanding spiritual revelation uh, the counsel the Holy Spirit uh, might you know the fear of the Lord you're wearing it like a garment before all the spirit realm and they all see that See, that's the difference between wearing a coat of brass, which is a closed heaven, closes off everything of heaven, to wearing the, uh, the covenant promises of God, or Joseph's coat of many colors. How, <laughs> it's like people talk about mantles, like I want the mantle of Enoch, I want the mantle of Elijah, I want the mantle, well, how about the mantle of like Jesus? <laughs> how about the mantle of like the covenant promises of Jesus himself, you're wearing the armor of God. You know, you're wearing the coat of many colors. You're wearing the spirit of God inside and around you and throughout you, through like all throughout you, your being. God, let that clothe us in righteousness, God. Clothe us in, the, in, in your coat of many colors, God. Let there be color in your life in Jesus' name. A lot of warfare dreams are black and white. 
I noticed that I've been uh, when I have a dream when a dream from God comes it's like it's like technicolor it's like colors within colors I've seen rainbow graph paper with colors within the colors and sparkly and glory it was a dream from God so it's wear the coat of many colors you know if you have a coat of brass where you're not allowing heaven to flow through your body and to you like you need to take that off and throw it off and ask God yeah crucify my flesh Crucify my emotions, put everything to death in Christ and let the Spirit of God just rise up out through me and around to me. Just clothe me in your righteousness, God. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. So that's something about the clothes there. If you want more on it, go to, uh, what is that? Ephesians 6, put on the, ar put on the armor of God. I'm surprised I haven't even mentioned that, but... Maybe we might hop into that later, what that actually is. You know it's the armor of God. You know, it's like the joy of the Lord. <laughs> it's your strength. <laughs> the stuff is all of God, man. It's, it's God. It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. But when that glory is manifest, it's God around you, the, like the manifest glory. It's like you're just decapitating all the works of the enemy just by wearing God and walking around in the earth realm, releasing heaven. So that it's on earth as it is in heaven. Let's get back to this Goliath stuff. I'll tell you about a dream I had too. Years ago. It's really encouraging. Coat of mail. Um, yeah. And the weight of the coat was 5,000 shekels of brass. And he had greaves of brass upon his legs. And a target of brass between his shoulders. It's all brass, brass, brass. Clothes, clothes, heavens, clothes, heavens, clothes, heavens. Shoulders. Target of brass between his <laughs> shoulders. Jesus carries the kingdom upon his shoulders. Who is that? Isaiah, uh, Isaiah 6. Shut up. Let's read that real quick. Holy Spirit, thank you for all this stuff. These are overcoming keys. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. That's Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. The government is upon his shoulder. And this guy had a target of brass <laughs> upon his shoulders. Uh, so you want, you want the covenant of God resting upon your shoulders. Uh, the government, where's that? Shut up. Anyways, yeah. Help me, Holy Spirit. Greaves of brass. <laughs> Greaves. Okay, verse 7. And the staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear ha uh, head weighed 600 shekels of iron. And one bearing a shield went before him. This is good. This is where all of you... <laughs> if, you've, if you've ever, like, been in a battle, if you ever... <laughs> You've all experienced this guy. Right here. Verse uh, 7 of uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 7. The staff of his spear was like a weaver's beam, and his spear head weighed 600 shekels of iron, and one bearing a shield went before him. That shield bearer. We've all faced him. It's one thing to fight a giant devil. It's another thing to even discern that his shield bearer. You know what a shield does? It blocks something from hitting the shield, uh, the enemy, right? Well, he's got a shield bearer. Those are those two or three <coughs> little spirits that come before him. Like a shield bearer is like that, say, uh, I'll give an example. Lust. You have a spirit of lust, that's that shield bearer spirit before the adultery comes. It's just a lust, it's just a thought, it's just something, and then you entertain that shield bearer, then all of a sudden there's the woman, or there's the man, or whatever, you grab them, and you guys, like, in our adultery, your whole life is destroyed, your marriage is destroyed. What happened? Well, that shield bearer got in there, and then Goliath came in, destroyed your life, destroyed your marriage, destroyed everything. <clears throat> That's one thing you gotta always be quick to discern is the shield bearer of any demon, of everything. Like, 
they just come as like little thoughts or little desires that try to like uh, distract you, make it look like uh, it's just something small. But what it's really doing is the shield there, it's blocking Goliath, who you don't really see. All you see is this little fantasy thing. You want to you wanna please your flesh. Holy Spirit, shut up. But that thing is actually there to destroy you. Jonathan had a shield bearer as well. Jonathan, when they went up to fight, they, they took out the... <laughs> like, they shook the earth. Just Jonathan and his shield bearer. Hallelujah. So, I don't just, you know, those are just those little spirits, those little foxes that spoil the vine. Those little temptations, subtle things, like just, you barely even know a spirit of lust is there until you're just like, you're masturbating, you're, you're hitting pornography, and you're, you're just, you're messing up your mind and destroying your life. Yeah, you gotta watch out for the shield bearers and stop them in their tracks. Because they're just small little subtle demons that just need to die. <laughs> that's why we pray, crucify our flesh, because that's where they come through, is through your flesh. They want, they want you to feed uh, your flesh nature, the fallen nature. It goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden where there was, it was, the, it was the curse of the serpent where God said, cursed shall you be all the days of your life, upon your belly shall you, shall you move, you know, and dust shall be your food all the days of your life. Dust? You know, serpent food is dust. It's the, it's the flesh. That's what God created Adam's body from. But then Adam sinned and then it became corrupt, the flesh. <laughs> That's why we die. Our bodies die, but our spirits go to Jesus because we're born again now. We're born from above. And, hallelujah. and so, yeah, don't feed serpents your flesh. That stuff is to be put to death by the Holy Ghost. Yeah, just make it a burnt offering. Just like, Lord, just torch my flesh right now in Jesus' name. Burn it all up. Every desire, everything that I've given to the enemy, God, just burn it up right now in the name of Jesus. I just lay myself. I'm a living sacrifice, God, before you. Thank you, Father. And everything that's tried to be connected to my life through these spirits that I've given into, I just sever them off now by the blood of Jesus. And they cannot approach me anymore. <laughs> And if they do, they will burn up in your presence in me, God, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So, yeah, that's the little shear bearer, shield bearer, trying to block, <laughs> distract you. Anyways, oh, yeah, let me talk about this dream. Well, hold on, yeah. Years ago, I had this dream, and uh, oh, I should have wrote it down. <laughs> I wrote it somewhere, I just can't remember where I wrote it, but. I was, uh, hold on, Holy Spirit, Shabba. I was walking down this long corridor and there was all these different weapons, like there was like swords, there was uh, like spears, like little daggers, uh, you know those, like the stick with a, with a spiky ball and a chain on it, like those things, I don't know, just these primitive weapons, uh, like, you know, Nunchucks, I don't even know if those were just like all these weapons, two long rows, two tables of just weapons. And I remember I had this little I had a little sword on me. You know, I know a little bit about how to use my sword, the word of God. I wasn't very sharp back then. I'm still not that sharp. Hopefully God will sharp you. Sharpen me, Lord. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. So I saw all these all these weapons and I had my little sword on me. And I'm walking down this thing and I'm like, which weapon should I use? But they all had this one thing in common. They weren't really, they looked primitive. Like they didn't look uh, appealing. Almost like they were the weapons of the enemy. I'm not sure though. So I'm just kind of like walking down this thing. And I got my own sword. And I remember something, I grabbed my sword and I saw this bamboo thing and I went, I just cut it in half. It was really sharp. <laughs> and then uh, I don't remember what happened to my sword after that. And then I kept walking and I came to the end of this corridor and there was this big mass, like 14 foot uh, a giant. I don't believe this was Goliath, this was just a giant. And instantly, as soon as I looked at it, I saw there was like pieces of armor kind of missing. Like he had like a, like half, half of his armor on. Some of it was missing and, and he was really dark in appearance. Like, but it wasn't really what he looked like. It was what he projected upon me. It was like this 
fear hit me. I was so scared. I was like terrified. Oh my gosh. I should have grabbed some weapons. I should have grabbed. And I'm freaking out. I'm panicking. And my sword, I, I looked down for my sword. I couldn't find my sword. I was just in a state of panic. And then I looked over and I saw this ladder. <laughs> Thank God. I ran to the ladder. I was climbing this ladder. I looked up and I saw this, this person full of light. I couldn't really see who he was, but I knew who he was by the spirit. And I said, David! Maybe this was Goliath, I don't know. I said, David, I need the anointing that you have when you walk the earth. You know, because he was a giant killer. <laughs> and then, uh, I can't remember what all happened. I just remember he just put his hand out like this and boom, faith just entered my entire being. All that fear left. And then I, I'm like, yeah, let's go crush this devil. And I'm climbing down the ladder and I don't even know, I don't even say thank you or anything. I just, oh, I'm ready, let's, let's go. I'm ready to like slay devils, I had faith. And then as soon as I got to the bottom, I looked at the devil, <laughs> the devil, this giant, like 14 feet tall, missing pieces of armor. And I went up to him and boom, instantly I, I got struck with fear again. But faith was mixed in like in my spirit, man. So I had, I was like ready to go. And then I realized right there behind the giant was this doorway. And it seemed like that was the door to my destiny. And this giant was a destiny blocker. It was fear blocking the door for me to walk into my destiny. And I was like, I went flying at him and then I, I woke up. And what I gathered from all this is what I, after I woke up, I was like, whoa, that fear wasn't even mine. He had a spirit of fear. He feared me more than I feared him because I realized that fear wasn't mine. He was a spirit of fear, manifesting fear around him because he was fearful. He knew he was going to die. And David imparted enough faith in me to know that I can plow right through this giant. I can take him because it's not the battle is the Lord's. I just step in there in faith. I just face him with the Lord coming through me and the Lord never loses. <laughs> and even if I do die and lose my life, I go to be with the Lord ever present with him without any separation. So either way, I win. <laughs> it was a win-win situation. Hallelujah. That's good. So if you got some door blockers blocking you from walking in your destiny, step through it. Just step through fear and just know that God is with you. God is in you. God is around you. And that's the, that they are the ones who are afraid and they're just projecting that fear on you. It's not you. You have all authority in heaven and earth by Jesus being that authority in you. Now just go and conquer all the giants and take the land. The land is the earth garden. <laughs> We're cleansing the heavens so that the kingdom of heaven can come on earth as it is in heaven. And all these giants must be taken out. It's our job. It's our destiny to take them all out. Hallelujah. But you got to be equipped. You got to be well aware that they do have shield bearers that go before them. And you take up the shield bearers. They're just... <laughs> Easiest way to take out a shield bearer is ask God... Ask Holy Spirit in Romans 8 to put to death the deeds of the flesh. And then when the, the, the giant comes against you, they start projecting that fear upon you. Thank you, God, for faith. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing comes by the Word of God. So you, without a relationship with God, you, you won't have faith. You might think you have it up here, but faith is something that comes from deep within your spirit, man. It's the faith of God coming through you through experience. I mean, faith comes by, this is say by reading the Bible. <laughs> faith comes by hearing the word of God. It's like, yeah, you can read the logos, but you might not get any faith from that. It's but you, when you read the logos and a rhema pops out, which, where God is really speaking that word to your spirit, faith comes by hearing, because you heard the word of God. You heard the rhema. It was more than logos. It was rhema. It was God breathed. It was spirit life on that word where it becomes tangible, a tangible piece <laughs> of God that just poof, hits you. You feel the life on it, you know? You sense the life of God in those words. It's, 
like Jesus, uh, what is that? Shata. <laughs> No one ever spoke like this man, you know, they were, even unbelievers recognized the voice of God in Jesus. And Jesus himself said that my words are spirit and they are life. That spirit is rhema, ruach, coming through the words, the word of God. It's not the God that was just back there, it's like the God that's here and now <laughs> and always will be, you know. When you get to the Holy of Holies, you just enter into that eternal realm of God and you just realize like, whoa, you know, way back there in time, it was hard, but over here, it's like everything's easy, it's rest. When you're in the manifest, like I'm talking about the Holy of Holies where it's so deep, where almost like, you almost lose consciousness of the world around you because you're so, you're so deep in the manifest presence of God. You're so deep in the heart of God where it's like everything's eternal. I feel it coming right now. Everything's just eternally God, who always was, who is, and always will be. It's like you're in this realm of God, where everything is easy. You know that He hears every prayer before you've ever prayed it. He's already heard them, and He's answering them. You don't really have to know how to pray. You just have to know who you're praying to. The Spirit of God, the substance of God. In that holy of holies realm, it's like you've you've know you've already won, because he's already won. Jesus overcame the world, so you step into his overcoming, and you overcome the world just by being in him. How do you know if God's pleased you with you? When Jesus got baptized, the Father said, "This is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well pleased." If you're in the Son, guess who he's well pleased with too? Because you're in the Son. I plead the blood of Jesus on you and I plead the blood of Jesus on me. So that all the all the all the atmosphere, all the <laughs> warfare, all the things going on around you, they see the blood of Jesus. And that instantly shows them their defeat. Because when Jesus <laughs> the cross was the defeat of all the, all the devil's works, it is finished. And we just it's like we we step into God and we just walk out proclaiming to all the principalities and the powers of the air that it is finished. You're all finished. <laughs> just by me being here and God manifesting out through me, you're we're just you're you're done. Get down to the earth. I think you want to cast him down to the earth or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how all I know is that he the devil's toast. Hallelujah. We were on the winning side. I've read the end of the book and it looks really bright. <laughs> Drinking from the river of life freely. Hallelujah. Always with God, worshiping God in perfect unity. No more tears, no more sorrow. All the all those things are washed away. All things are made new. But you know what? Just step into the Holy Holies with God and just go there now. <sighs> past time, past all the trials and tribulations. Just step into God in that holy of holies place and you just drink of who he is drink in his goodness drink in his love it's there where you realize that everything you've ever been taught is irrelevant apart from his words and those teachings it just it'll burn because it's not eternal Jesus said my words they are spirit they are life and he also said that those words will never pass away what was you know inspired by the Holy Spirit <laughs> So to get into those words, believe those words inspired by the Holy Ghost. Receive every word that God is speaking to your spirit. And every word that doesn't have the spirit of God on it, just throw it away. Just shelve it or toss it. And like, here you go, God, these words. <laughs> here's, a, here's a burnt offering for you, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's what David did to Goliath. Shabba. <sighs> and a shield bearer went before him. Okay, bearing a shield before him. And he stood and cried unto the armies of Israel and said unto them, Why are you come out to set your battle in array? Am not I a Philistine and you servants of Saul? Choose you a man, <laughs> choose you a man for you and let him come down to me. 
if you be able to fight with me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then shall ye be our servants and serve us. It's a trick. And the Philistines said, I defy the armies of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. When Saul and all Israel heard those words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. Spirit of fear. When you can discern that, you'll understand. Like you could just step through it by faith. And this guy did. They were afraid. I don't blame them, man. We, they didn't have Jesus covenant back then, man. I'd probably be like just, you know, something will drip down my pant leg, you know? I'd be scared too. Now David was the son of that Ephraimite of Bethlehem, Judah, though, uh, whose name was Jesse. And he had eight sons. Oh, I like that number, man. Shabba. Uh, and the man went among them. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I love this stuff. God, continue to teach us more. I love you. God, thank you for these keys to overcome all the works of the enemy that we're not ignorant, but we're learning right now how to become, just remain overcomers in you, Lord. In Jesus' name, shaka. Okay. <laughs> and it went up among men for an old man in these days of Saul. I have no idea what I just read. Verse 13. And the three eldest sons of Jesse went and followed Saul. To battle and the names of his three sons that went to the battle were Eli, no Eliab the firstborn, next unto him Abinadab and the third Shama, and David was the youngest and the three eldest followed Saul. But David went and returned from Saul to feed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. Come on, feed the sheep. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. You know, we all know that that's not a threat, right? It's a key. Jesus always gives us key how to keep his commandments. How do you, how do you keep the commandments of God? It's impossible. Well, yeah, you just love God. <laughs> it's not like this slave mentality. It's this lover's mentality. I just want to do everything for you, God, because I love you so much. I, just, I know you're already pleased with me in the sun and I just want to continually walk in that pleasure, God, that you're pleased with me and I'm fully complete in the sun. And you know, I just love you. So I'm, of course I want to step out in faith and kill giants. <laughs> of course I want to free Israel, you know, from this spirit of fear. <laughs> it's because I love you, God. Hallelujah, man. But David went and returned from Saul and freed his father's sheep at Bethlehem. To feed, to feed. Hallelujah. And the Philistine drew near morning and evening and presented himself, presented, presented himself 40 days. 40 days, that would be so intimidating, you know? That's like somebody coming, it's like ISIS or something coming to your door and banging on your door you know, with their gun. But uh, you just they don't open the door, you pretend you're not home or something. Like this is, this is a real threat. They're gonna kill everybody. But what do you do? What do you do? What do you do? But David went and returned from Saul to feed his fellowship at Bethlehem. And the Philistines drew near morning and evening, presented himself 40 days. And Jesse said unto David, his son, take now for your brethren of Ephrah this parched corn and these 10 loaves and run to the camp of thy brethren. Fresh bread, hallelujah. And carry these cheeses to the captain of their household. And look how your thy brethren fare and take their pledge. Oh, I should have grabbed the NIV or something. Anyways, now Saul, you know, if you don't understand what I'm saying, just pray in tongues for the next two minutes. It gets good. Now Saul and they all and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. And David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with the keeper and took and went as Jesse had commanded him, and he came to the trench as the host was going forth to the fight and shouted for the battle. Passion! He was shouting, Shata. Jesse commanded and came forth and blah, and shouted for the battle. Come on, man. You gotta be aggressive if you're gonna, like, if you're gonna take out devils and giants and you know, 
well, I'm gonna kill you. You know, what happened in the Old Testament was the prophet rebuked the king. He was on his sick bed or whatever. I can't remember who was sick, but he's like, uh, shoot the arrows out of the window. And, uh, and then he said, like, smash the arrows. And uh, he only sma the king only smashed three times. And he's like, you idiot! If you should have smashed five or six times, then you would have defeated them. But now you'll be at war. So there's something about being aggressive and passionate to destroy the works of the enemy. You gotta be passive. You gotta be aggressive. Uh, Jesus was pretty aggressive when he went to the cross for us and died for us. That wasn't being passive, that was being aggressive. He knocked all the people down. <laughs> We're going to arrest him, I think it was in John 20. Knocked them all down. <laughs> Had to let them get back up so they could take him away. It's like the Lion of Judah was just playing with the prey, but you know, <laughs> he, get the, he, got, he allowed them to get back up, arrest him, pull his beard. He could have called on a legion of angels, but he chose to go that path. That took more courage than uh, just wiping them all out, because he could have. But uh, he had... He, he wanted to obey his father. It was his father's desire that he got his children back, which is why we're here now. He took his seed, which was the, Jesus. Unless the seed falls on the ground and dies, it, you know, it, it abides alone. But if it if dies, it bears much fruit. God took the seed of his son, planted him into the earth. He died and rose again and bringing forth many sons into glory. It's like he sowed his son. He was, he's reaping sons of God. Sons of God in the glory, hallelujah, man. Yeah, like, so, yeah, God's getting what he reaped. He's <laughs> reaping what he sowed. Hallelujah, we're here today <laughs> because he sowed a seed of Jesus into the earth, his most precious seed, and wow, he's, he's the firstborn of all creation. Here we go. Uh, Jesus, now Saul... And they, all the men of Israel, were in the valley of Elah, fighting with Philistines, and David rose up early in the morning. Oh yeah, he shouted for the battle. And Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array, an army against army, and David left his carriage in the head of the, of the keeper of the carriage, and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines and spake according to this according to the same words you know that he's saying the 40 days uh, and David heard him and all the men of Israel when they saw the man fled from him and were sore afraid why because he's manifesting the spirit of fear well, uh, you got to see from the reality see from the spirit but not in fear but see from the spirit of faith in God <laughs> you know there's the reality is the spirit realm. It's more dominant over the natural realm. So when you see from God, God's perspective is like, oh, there's more with us than there is with them. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Hallelujah. Shaka. And the men of Israel said, have you seen this man? Come up. Surely to defy Israel as he come. And it shall be that the king, I mean, the man who kills him, the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father, father's house free in Israel. And David spoke to the man who stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man who kills this Philistine and takes away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? Now, I, I question that. The armies of the living God. Was he talking about Israel? Or was he talking about the angelic host that was all around them? The angelic host, the armies of the living God. It's not a flesh army, it's an army of spirit. There's more with us than there is with them. See, when you worship God, God, like David was a man after God's own heart. He, he was a worshiper. And the closer you, the more you worship God, the more deeper that God gets revealed to you and around you, the more you realize that, wow, God's really powerful. God's more powerful than all the works of darkness. God's more powerful than all the armies of the earth. And God is with us in Christ now. Look at this. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy, defy the armies of the living God? The armies. There's the angelic armies. 
that will back up his word. There's the natural army who God, like, you know, the Christians or whatever, whoever received Christ into their heart of the living God. These are his armies. There's Joel's army, Sheba. And the people answered him after this matter, saying, So shall it be done to the man that kills him. And Eliab, his eldest uh, brother, heard when he spoke unto the men. And Eliab's anger was kindled against David. And he said, Why comest thou down hither? <laughs> or why did you come here, man? And with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart. For thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. It's funny because actually David came down. He's the one who was going to be fighting in the battle because they were too cowardly to fight. <laughs> but look at this. There's so much in this one verse. His eldest brother. You ever have your older brother like just kind of crush you? Uh, you're not good enough for this ministry or say your pastor won't put you in a position. <laughs> Whatever, man. Who cares about positions of man? Let God place you in the position in the body of Christ and those living stones fitly joined together. God will put you in position. Who cares what man thinks? When, you're in, when, you, when you care what God thinks, what man thinks is almost it's like darkness. Like it's, if there's no glory coming through it, like why does that even matter? Those words are worthless. If you see, like, you could just make a YouTube video. Why do you got to be doing something in this, this church structure when the true church is in the spirit? Like, uh, the true church, like the false church would say, we gather together in a building, in the, in the natural building, in the natural. We sing hymns, we sing songs, we never encounter God, but we sing, we talk to God, we read the Bible. But the true spiritual house is Christ. The true church is the body of Christ, which is 100% spiritual. The body of Christ, Christ is the spiritual anointing. Christ is, you know, it's 100% spiritual in the glory. It's in Christ. It's in the Holy Ghost. It doesn't matter if you gather in a building or gather in a car or gather on the street or gather in a field like these guys are gathering right here into battle. The body of Christ is in Christ. <laughs> so if you're not even in Christ, you're not even in the body. <laughs> You got to get into Christ, Hallelujah, which is 100% spiritual. It's not a natural gospel. It's supernatural. You can manifest it out into the natural realm and people will see it, the substance of those spirit, that spirit, but it's still spiritual. You're just manifesting spiritual things through a natural into the natural realm. That's why people get healed. It's supernatural. It's invisible, but it's like, it's, it's manifesting in the natural. They get a brand new leg where there was no leg, you know? <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, we're going to have to go into part two. My, my, my recorder cuts it and crops it. Whatever. We'll keep going, though. Hallelujah. Shaka Bubba. Shunday. Where am I? What am I? Uh... Oh, yeah. Here we go. And Eliab, his oldest brother, was like slamming David. Uh, so shall it be done to the man that kills him. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spoke and Unto the men, Eliab's anger was killed, kindled against David. You know, look, I'll tell you straight up from experience. When you walk with God, and those, it's like the it's like the older brother and the younger brother in the parable of I think it's Luke 15 or 16. It's like the older brother was angry. That because the younger brother like took all the money from the father, went out, spent his all of his uh, life savings on prostitutes, hookers, and stuff like that, beer, and just living up in the world. And then he just repents inside the the pig pen. He gets real 